Hi, I'm Lindsay MacArthur from Kanzawick Press. I'm sorry that I'm unable to join you live today, but I'm excited to tell you about some of the books coming from Candlewick this summer and fall. We are kicking things off with The Skull, a new suspense horror book from John Classen based on a Tyrolean folktale that John discovered while visiting a library in Alaska. The story is about a girl named Attila who runs away from home, and after a long struggle in the deep woods, she comes across a large empty house that is home to the Skull. The Skull invites Attila inside and offers to let her stay the night if she likes, and she accepts. There's one problem, of course, and that is every night a headless skeleton arrives bellowing, give me that skull, I want that skull. This story is full of John Classen's iconic deadpan humor, expressive characters, and talent for eeriness. The art is dramatic and often dark with pinpricks of lightness and humor. This book is perfect for readers who love stories about things that go bump in the night. Next, we have the third and final See the Cat book from David La Rochelle and Mike Winuka with three stories about things you cannot see. The first one is See the Ghost, which features Max the dog and Baby Cakes the cat, who are frightened by a ghost that is invisible to the reader, and very proud of how scary he is. The second is See the Wind, which features Max and Baby, baby Cakes having a picnic under a tree, and by the end, the wind has blown absolutely everything, even the words, off the page. And finally, the third story, See the Fairy, brings all the characters together again with a mischievous fairy named Trixie, who is so small that she is invisible to the naked eye, and she wrecks havoc on the group. My Bollywood Dream is a debut picture book from author-illustrator Avani Dewa Vendi, and is a love letter to Mumbai and Bollywood with Hindi words sprinkled throughout the book. It follows a young girl who was on her way to the cinema with her family, and when she looks at the world around her, she imagines it like a Bollywood movie that she's filming, complete with a choreographed dance sequence atop a long line of cars. Her love of Bollywood movies connects her to her culture and heritage, and in the end, we see her main character, all grown up, filming her very own movie. Next, we have a return to the beloved character, Alma, with the first two titles in a brand new adorable bilingual board book series. Each title is a concept style board book with the first title, Alma and her family, focusing on naming members of Alma's family. And the second, Alma head to toe focuses on names for body parts. Each spread features both the English text and the Spanish translation on the same page and in a different color to differentiate the language. Where many bilingual board books focus on individual vocabulary words or basic concepts, the concepts here are a little more complex, and each title in the series has a light narrative structure featuring complete but not difficult sentences, so no storytelling conventions are lost while introducing little ones to new concepts and words. Betty and the Mysterious Visitor is from debut author Anne Twist who is the mother of Harry Styles. Yes, the Grammy award-winning Harry Styles, and is also a social media influencer and philanthropist in her own right. This gentle picture book is about a girl named Betty who loves to help her grandmother tend to her beautiful garden and make jams to sell at the local farmer's market. But a mysterious visitor, which you can see on the cover is a badger, starts to destroy the garden and Betty must find a way to save it. Anne was inspired by stories she read to Harry and her daughter Gemma when they were younger, and even based the garden in this story off of her own garden. And illustrator Emily Sutton even managed to sneak a few of Anne's internet famous cats into the illustrations. Next, the hilarious duo Mac Barnett and John Classen have teamed up to tackle the age old question, how does Santa go down the chimney? And what does he do if the house doesn't have a chimney? Does Santa know about the key hidden under the flower pot? And what happens once he's inside? Does Santa have night vision goggles? 
This pairing of Mac Barnett's deadpan text and John Klassen's inventive art makes for a truly delightful behind the scenes look at Santa's Christmas time journey to houses around the world. Next, we have Dasher Can't Wait for Christmas, which is Matt Tavares' follow-up to the New York Times bestseller Dasher about the brave doe who saved Christmas. It's only one more sleep before Christmas Eve, and Dasher can't contain her excitement. Upon hearing Christmas carols, she heads off to explore and stumbles upon a small town doing a Christmas tree lighting. But the snow was falling heavy, and Dasher can't seem to find her way back home until she comes across a child named Charlie who gives Dasher a compass to help her find her way. To thank Charlie, Dasher asks Santa to give Charlie a special gift, a compass from the North Pole. This story of Christmas magic highlights how wonderful it is to give just the right gift and perfectly captures a child's excitement of counting down for Christmas. Vlad the Fabulous Vampire is the third title in the World of Gustavo series and introduces us to a new character, Vlad, a very stylish vampire bat who feels restricted by the black cape that he typically wears. He wants to stop hiding behind it and let his rosy cheeks break through. With a little encouragement from a new friend, Shelly, with vibrant pink hair herself, Vlad starts to let his true color shine. This series from Flavia is so great, aside from being perfect additions to Halloween collections, with spooky but not scary and always adorable characters, each picture book has themes of instilling confidence and bravery and helps encourage little ones to not shy away from being their own unique selves. We are also publishing Vlad simultaneously in Spanish. We Could Fly is the newest addition in an exciting collaboration with Grammy Award winner Rhiannon Giddens to bring her beautiful songs to life in picture book format. Based on the song of the same name, We Could Fly draws inspiration from Black folklore traditions and the myth of flying away created by enslaved African Americans and explores themes of female solidarity across generations. Rannon was also inspired by Virginia Hamilton's The People Could Fly, a collection of African-American folktales. Ups and Downs, A Book of Emotions, from Geisel winner Mike Winuka, explores a wide range of emotions, some more complex than just happy, sad, or angry, told in a gentle narrative that follows three kids over the course of a school day. This book promotes emotional literacy and will inspire discussions about identifying and managing complex feelings. The vocab in this book has been vetted for age appropriateness by a researcher at the Child Emotion Lab at the University of Wisconsin. Maisie's Big Book of Kindness is publishing in time for World Kindness Day on November 13th. This book celebrates everyday acts of kindness and teaches kids different ways that they can show kindness. Some examples include sharing toys, making cards and gifts, watering plants, caring for friends, and being kind to animals. From Newbery honoree Rajani LaRocca, Marsala Chai Fast and Slow is a loving story about a grandfather and grandson whose daily ritual deepens their relationship. Arav is fast and impatient, and his grandfather, called Tata, is careful and deliberate. Every day at five o'clock, Tata makes Marsala chai for the family, but one day, when he sprains his ankle, Arav decides to make the chai himself, but he moves too fast and misses crucial steps in the recipe. He needs to learn how to slow down to get the recipe just right. Back matter in this book includes Rajani's own recipe for making marsala chai. Boy Yogi, How a Wounded Family Learned to Heal, is from Coretta Scott King, John Steptoe, New Talent Author Award winner David Barclay Moore, and Caldecott Honor recipient Noah Denman. This is a moving picture book about a father returning home from serving overseas with PTSD and the healing power of yoga. Boyogi serves as a wonderful resource for young children on understanding mental illness and PTSD in their parents and of healing and recovery through the lens of yoga. 
The title of this book comes from a nickname that the father gives his son, Boy Yogi. Next, we have 11 words for love, a journey through Arabic expressions of love. The Arabic language actually has more than 50 words for love, but this picture book from Rhonda Abdel Fata and Maxine Benebe Clark focuses on 11 of them. With the refrain, there are 11 words for love and my family knows them all, echoed throughout the text, as a family expresses love for each other and the world around them, and celebrates the many forms love takes. Each word is featured separately on the page, where it's introduced with both Arabic and translated texts, along with art illustrating the narrative of the story. Some of the expressions of love are obvious, between a parent and child, or a sibling or friends. Others are more nebulous, the love for a specific place or homeland, or a grief-like love for a person who's no longer with us. There continues to be a real lack of stories featuring Arab families for young readers, especially stories that aren't centered around specific holidays. So it's nice to have a picture book that can live on bookshelves year round focused on the universal theme of love. 10 Word Tiny Tales is an inventive collection of writing prompts featuring 20 bite-sized stories, each only 10 words long and illustrated by a different artist. Each story brings a new world to explore with a spooky gothic tone. The book opens with a note from the author and offers two writing challenges at the end, making this a perfect jumping off point for National Novel Writing Month in November. Frankie and Friends Breaking News is the first in a new first chapter book series from Christine Platt featuring young Frankie, a budding future journalist who starts covering breaking news in her own home while her mother is off covering major events out in the world. This book is perfect for inquisitive and imaginative young audiences and is a great early, gentle introduction to media literacy and the concept of reporting. Back Matter includes kid-friendly definitions of news terms, and we have three more books signed up in the series, with the next book releasing in spring 2024. From the award-winning duo Owen Colfer and PJ Lynch comes a brand new Arthurian-inspired adventure story, Three Tasks for a Dragon. Prince Lear failed the test to secure his position on the throne and is banished from the kingdom by his stepmother, who declares that the crown be passed to her own son. The only way that Lear can redeem himself is by successfully completing a quest to rescue the maiden Kathleen from the once fearsome dragon. This is an original dragon quest story with a feminist twist, sure to be a hit with fans of medieval fantasies and magical tales. All the Small Wonderful Things is Kate Foster's heartfelt middle grade novel featuring 11 year old Alex, an autistic child in pursuit of his first human friendship, though his cockpoo Kevin is an excellent companion. Inspired by Kate's experience with her own autistic child and their family dog, this is a truly special story of what it really takes to be and make a friend, with an honest and open take on living and thriving with neurodivergence, serving as both a mirror for our autistic readers who may see themselves in Alex and a window to better understand friends. Next, we have the final book in the Dekalu Drive series, starring the one and only Mercy Watson in Mercy Watson is Missing. Every favorite Mercy Watson character makes an appearance in the search for Mercy in this extended conclusion. Full of humor and warmth, this book is an extra special treat for loyal Mercy fans. I'm really excited to introduce you to the first in a new trio of original fairy tale novellas from Kate DiCamillo. The Puppets of Spellhorst is set in the fictional world of Narendi. Each novella will feature black and white illustrations by a different illustrator and centers around themes of hope and inspiration, two themes prevalent in many of Kate's works. The Puppets of Spellhorst, illustrated by Julie Morstan, features a quintet of hand puppets, a king, a wolf, a girl, a boy, and an owl, each with their own dreams and longings, who find themselves in a trunk together and are carried off into an adventure and in the care of two sisters, and ends with a performance of the puppets. 
We are also delighted to be issuing a 20th anniversary collector's edition of The Tale of Despero, which includes a brand new 15 page Despero short story from Kate, also set in the world of Narendi, and new art from Tim Basil Ehring. Two Headed Chicken is back, this time for a time traveling adventure. Filled with the same absurdist humor as the first book, New York Times bestselling author Tom Engelberger delivers another entertaining adventure story featuring dinosaurs, castles, spaceships, and even Emily Dickinson. Claire Lorden's stunning debut, One in a Million, is a graphic novel memoir about a teen managing a chronic, invisible illness while balancing the already delicate world of high school. Claire's struggles with her symptoms while navigating the medical system and advocating for herself for a diagnosis are unfortunate realities that many know all too well. And one in a million helps normalize this experience for those dealing with chronic and mental health issues of their own. But it also helps improve understanding and build empathy for those who might know someone in a similar situation. The title comes from Claire's ultimate diagnosis, Cushing's disease, a condition that literally impacts one in a million children under the age of 18. I am thrilled to talk about the recent news that our very own Meg Medina is the new National Ambassador for Children's Literature and the first Latinx author to serve as National Ambassador. One way we're excited to celebrate Meg and her new role this fall is with a brand new graphic novel edition of her Pura Belfry award-winning novel, Yaki Delgado Wants to Kick Your Ass. Publishing simultaneously in hardcover and paperback and featuring two color art from Mel Valentine, it's really great to have this new format to introduce the novel to a new generation of readers. Meg also aims to focus on accessibility of stories and entry points into books for reluctant readers as part of her platform, so this format fits well with this mission. And here is a list of all of Meg's titles covering all age ranges from picture books to middle grade and YA. Meg's platform as National Ambassador is called Quinta May and will focus on sharing stories with a special emphasis on sharing stories bilingually and with a nod to Meg's Latinx culture. How to Love is a graphic take on a self-help book with a humorous, heartfelt perspective on dating, relationships, and identity from Alex Norris, a webcomic artist with a huge online following. This collection of all original comics is structured around typical questions written into relationship advice columns, spanning topics like identifying a first crush, asking someone out for the first time, coping with a tough breakup, and addresses the complexities of the gender and sexuality spectrum in a thoughtful way. Perfect both for the many fans of Alex's web comics or young people just starting to learn about themselves and exploring relationships with others. The totally true story of Gracie Byrne is full of swoon-worthy romance, 80s pop culture references, and a little bit of fantasy. This truly delightful romantic comedy has been a huge hit with YA romance fans in-house, and everyone who has read it has raved about it. Set in 1987, 16-year-old Gracie Byrne is new in town and tired of spending her days as the side character while action happens around her. When Gracie discovers a mysterious journal, she realizes the words she writes starts to come true and leads her life in astonishing new directions. She starts writing her way into becoming the main character she truly is. Full of emotional depth in Gracie's relationship with her grandmother, who has Alzheimer's, which was inspired by Shannon's own relationship with her grandmother. This YA rom-com will be a hit with fans of Jenny Han and Rachel Lynn Solomon. Lastly, we have Goddess Crown, the exciting debut novel from British-Nigerian author Shadela Pete, a dramatic and compelling Afro-fantasy set in the fictional kingdom of Gala, where 16-year-old Kalithia, who has been raised in seclusion, enters royal court after tragedy and must face a new political realm filled with corruption, secrecy, and romantic intrigue. This page-turning YA debut is one of our lead books on the list, and a follow-up set in the same world is planned for 2025. 
thank you so much for joining today and for all that you do getting books into the hands of readers. Our school and library specific Instagram and Twitter handles are below as well as our new TikTok handle and my emails below lindsay.mcarthur at candlewick.com. Feel free to email me if you have any questions, requests, uh, or just want to share a book that you're excited about that you heard today. Thank you.